Howdy everyone. We are here on Daisy Downs Farm and I'm doing a little mod to the truck that I thought you would be very interested in if you're an NPS owner. I'm hanging out here with Rosie. Hey Rosie. Hey. Rosie's a resident pig. Hey girl. She's my mate, keeping me company. And what I am doing is I am installing a cabin air filter. This truck comes standard with what you could call best as a strainer. You can see it here. It's got a little bit of dirt on it. It's basically a fly screen. That's all it is. Stopping the dust and whatever else getting in the cab. Also, you might want to note that if you go through a river crossing, as soon as the water gets that high, you've just got this little deflector here and the front cover. As soon as it gets higher than that high, if it forces around, it'll go straight into the cab. So we're going to help prevent that a bit. We're also going to stop the dust and I'll show you how. I have purchased a washable K&N cabin air filter. All the details will be on our website in a blog about the filter and all of that and the dimensions and so on for the brackets and i have had made up this rather well sort of complicated bracket and retainer and basically that is going to fit hopefully right there and we'll have a cabin air filter mount the truck has two air filters the one i just showed you from the front which can you can simply unclip by putting your hand up around the bottom here pushing the two tabs together and pulling it out there is another one of these filters for the recirculated air so when you put it on recirculate there's another one of these in the cabin as well and as you can see it just goes straight into the blower hey eh? So when you go through a river crossing, that will just simply leak there. Hopefully, when we've got our filter in front of it, it will be a lot more resistant to water. If you go through a deep creek crossing, it'll still get through, obviously, but you know what I mean. <laughs> it's going to stop a lot more uh, than if you had nothing. So I'm just going to clean this filter and put it back in, just so it's there and it plugs up the hole at the bottom. You cannot get a replacement filter for this unit that has a real filter material in it. Um, they don't make it. It just simply doesn't fit because it's too thin and they just don't do it. I've tried and tried to get one, but you cannot. So hence, we made our own. Hopefully it fits. We'll see how it goes. First job. Is to remove this little rubber bit um, we're silicon up the holes we won't be using that anymore that'll be gone we could probably put a bit of rubber along the bottom of this guy when we do, when we stick it there if we really need to but I don't think I'll need to I think it'll just get in the way Next thing I need to do is line up these bolt holes. Just sit right on the edge there. Like so. Then we will drill them, stick it on. I just need to flex that out of the way a bit. Just in case you're wondering, our Oasis compressor from Jet Air Compressors is still going great. So it's been smashing out the tyres and everything as good as new, as you would expect. So it's been very good. And just on another side note, we have 
been supplied a fridge from Bogue R RV. It just looks very, very similar to a Waco because I've got a Waco that I've had for about oh, 18 years and it looks extremely similar to that. And we've actually replaced our Esky with that fridge. We used to have an Esky on this side, if you recall, and we used to put freezer blocks in our other freezers and then put them back in the Esky for all the, you know, fruit and veg and dairy and all that sort of thing. But we had problems with that in the end because those Esky blocks were just increasing the temperature in the freezer too much and starting to melt you know let's say you have a frozen packet of peas or corn or something it would start to melt that uh, the frozen water in there and they would all clump together which obviously is not good for the the frozen stuff and it's no good for getting it out so when we got offered a chance to give this a test run i thought why not it's given us a heap more space in this dog cage we can put our drinks in there and keep them cool instead of using the fridge or the freezer on the other side and it seems to run off our system fine it's still at a hundred percent normally by about 10 or so in the morning that the um, power is already up we can go and check it now it's just gone probably about eight o'clock morning <laughs> morning mate There are. It's just gone 8 o'clock and we're at 82%. So we can keep an eye on that today. It'll get up to 100 easily. We've got super sunny weather, but it currently is 34 degrees already. If you can see there on our ambient temperature and our um, angles are working just great. Well, I've changed shirt. The singlet was just too hot in the sun. I was going to get burnt to a crisp. So I've moved on to sleeves. We'll see. If you're keen on having a dust-free cab or just some more information on this filter, head on over to our website. We are currently working on version 2 and taking expressions of interest. Head on over. Believe it or not, my Loctite has dried up. Well, semi-dried up. I haven't really had that happen before. Must be too hot. It's turned all solid. I do have spring washers and washers on it as well, but I thought I'd just better put some on there. So I've stuck the housing to the firewall of the truck or the front wall of the truck with a, an adhesive like Sikaflex to seal it all up. I've also 
bolted it on with those two bolts that hold the blower unit on so we're done washable stop the dust looks good all sealed up no water should be enough compression I'm hoping with the rubber much better I did have to modify the front panel a bit around here it was a little bit low if I were to do it again I would just offset the top half from the bottom half it was made in two pieces and just have it come up 20 mil higher and it should all be fine but we'll put the front panel on and we should be done so to modify the front panel I did have to cut out along here you can see where the black spray paint is um, that little lip there which has made it a little bit weaker I also had to cut this back brace and here so it would fit if you were to move that whole unit up 20 mil like I said I don't think you'd have to cut anything at all and it would just fit in I was concerned at the start until I saw how much rust was in this top panel all around here this top rubber had rust under it you can see it a bit there so when I saw that I thought well it's only going to last another two years really anyway unless I do something so that's pretty poor from a Suzu I think this top rubber this top rubber much catch the salt and whatever else as you drive along here mustn't have been prepared properly and it's rusted like hell which is pretty average for a three-year-old vehicle I reckon Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe. If you want a reminder, hit the bell. And remember, we always love a thumbs up. If you'd like to be more involved, check out our Patreon page or our website.